Okay, today we're going to be looking at these seven segment screens. Uh, these are, here I have four digits uh, connected together. Uh, and I want to talk about that a little bit. Now, I'm just now getting back into working with microcontrollers such as Arduino and the ESP. About 10 years ago, I really wanted to get into it and really had no clue what I was doing. And I made a mistake. <laughs> I mean, it's not a horrible mistake, but look, this is, this is, look at, look at all these little uh, single, single digit segment displays I bought and I have a bunch of the uh, the four digit ones here. Now why was this a mistake? I thought back at the time buying these things in bulk was a good thing to save myself some money and buying in bulk is not a bad idea if you're going to be using them but look at look at how many pins are on the back of just one of these. So that's a single single segment one right there. Let's, uh, let's see, focus in on this. So there's a single segment one and it's got uh, 10 pins on it. And yes, you can control this with an Arduino. Uh, you can also get, you know, a four character one here. And you got to remember that, you know, you have to control each of these lights. Each digit is seven segments plus the decimal points. Uh, this one actually has semicolons in it as well. Uh, and so for the number of pins to control all that isn't that bad. But you're going to be using up a lot of your pins on your Arduino or whatever device you're using if you go this route. A better solution is to get a board. Um, so I bought this all as one unit. The only thing I had to do was uh, solder on the uh, header pins here. And uh, it comes with a board and a Max chip, Max 7219, I believe it is. Um, and that chip controls everything. So now, all I need are are five pins uh, from my Arduino. Uh, I got the the positive in the ground, and then I have uh, digital in, clock in, and load. So that's just a little little piece of advice when you're buying one of these. This was I don't know how much I paid for those other screens because again I bought them ten years ago. But this whole thing with the board and the two screens with the four digits each uh, was a dollar, you know. So a dollar to a dollar twenty-five, so definitely go that route. And this tutorial is on this chip here, which is used in lots of different little displays, as you'll see as tutorials come up. But uh, right now, we're going to begin working on an Arduino here. Um, I actually today have coming in the mail a Arduino Uno, or at least an Arduino Uno clone. This is my Arduino from probably close to ten years ago, um, maybe not quite that long, maybe seven, eight years ago. Uh, but it's an older model. But let's go ahead. I have a fresh. Uh, install of Arduino IDE installed here on my Linux machine. So let's go ahead and start working with this. So the first thing I need to do, of course, is make sure I have the correct board selected. Since I'm working with the older board, I'll select that. I'm also going to make sure that I have the correct port selected. Also make sure you have permissions to access that port, either adding yourself to the group or changing the permissions on that, or worst case scenario, running as root, but I wouldn't recommend that. Now that we have that, we need to install the libraries for this chip. So we're going to go to Sketch, Include Library, and we're going to go to Manage Libraries. And in here, and if you don't see that option, you might be running an older IDE. I'm running Android uh, 1.6.9 right now. And here I'm just going to type in Max 7, and you can see uh, it's narrowed down between these two libraries. And this bottom one here, LED Control, library for Max 7.2.19 and the Max uh, 7221. Uh, right now, the board I have is the Max 7219. Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll install that. And not only does that install the libraries, but it installs some examples for us. So if I go down to examples now, I can go down to LED control. And I'm going to choose this one that says seven segment. And of course, you can look through this code. And as you can see, you don't have to use these pins. In fact, in future tutorials, I'm going to show you some code I wrote and I just changed pins because I pick different pins. Um, but of course, obviously, when you're looking at this, let's focus in on this. So the top pin here, VCC, is going to be your 5 volt pin, then ground, then DIN in. So that's digital in. Uh, this says CS, some of the boards, and the code, example code, uh, say load. So that's your load pin, the CS, if you have this exact model. And then CLK is for clock. Now I also have pins on the other side here because you can hook up 
multiple of these monitor or these displays together and control them all through these pins. So if I wanted to run again, this is eight digits. If I wanted to add another eight digits, I can, and I won't have to use up any other pins on my Arduino. I haven't done that yet because it's the only one of these I have right now. Um, but that's what these extra pins over here are for. So once you have those hooked up, and again, if you look at the code, uh, example code here, this code is set up to run uh, pin 12 from the Arduino to the data in, so the, the uh, DIN, the digital in here on this, and oh, I probably want to focus that back, there we go, and uh, then we have 11 to clock and 10 from the Arduino to load. You can change those if you want to use different pins by changing the numbers here correspondingly. Let's go ahead and just click to upload this, and it's loading that code, and it's just going to go through a little demo here. As you can see, it's lighting up those first four digits, going through a bunch of numbers, and there's even some letters that you can encode in there. If we actually look at the header file, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, um, you can do underscores, dashes, uh, decimal points. Uh, and so you can actually look at through the code, uh, the header file that comes with this, uh, the library to see more examples, but it goes through a bunch of them right here. Now, uh, if we look at other example codes here, because there are three example codes that come with this library. So LED control. The second one says cascading devices. If I click that, I never really see anything but a decimal point light up on my Arduino. I'm assuming cascading means hooking up multiple monitors or multiple displays. So we'll skip over that today. And if we do this demo matrix and we run that, the pins are the same you'll see here that it starts just kinda lighting up the little LED segments somewhat randomly uh, and you might ask what that's all about. Well again this uh, MAX uh, 7219 pin, uh, chip doesn't just control segment uh, seven segment displays, it also controls other displays such as dot matrix and we'll get over that in a couple of weeks. So this code is actually if you had a, a LED uh, matrix dot matrix display it would be lighting up each row across and down and again we'll see that so that's you can run that on this and it's showing you lighting up each segment individually but that's really designed for the matrix display now in the next video I'm going to show you some uh, code that I've created that uh, uses this display that allows you to send numbers and certain text characters through serials. So if you wanted to have this hooked to your computer and have it sending information uh, through your USB, you know, as a serial port, you can. Uh, also, uh, then after that, we'll look at getting this set up on the ESP8266 module, allowing you to completely disconnect from your computer and then use Wi-Fi. And I wrote up some code that allows you to send HTTP requests to it to display text. Uh, so look at that, look for those videos in the next few weeks. So be sure to uh, like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss those future videos. And if you like my videos and you watch them often, think about becoming a supporter over at patreon.com. That's patreon.com forward slash mailx1000. There is a link in the description uh, as well as link uh, to my website and uh, and most of my tutorials, if I'm using any code I wrote, there should be a link to my GitHub page where you can get the example codes. So I thank you for watching, and as always, I hope that you have a great day.